Jorge in Gaston, South Carolina. ChristianEyewear.com here where believing is seeing. I am C more better, but call me Mo. Mo better because I'm have you seeing Mo better, looking Mo better, and show everyone else how I bring God's love and feeling back to glasses. When I cut your polarized, your prescription polarized gray blue mirrored lenses to go into the Ray Ban 4202 Andy, size 55, color 6153, which is a matte blue. I believe I'm going to take everything out of the original packaging as Ray Ban sends it to me. And your Italian leather Ray Ban case, your frame, your Ray Ban cleaning cloth, and junk mail because you just don't get enough junk mail as it is now in your regular mailbox or putting in your eyeglass cases. Now this frame comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping. I'm going to put that on there when I ship to you. And of course this is made in Italy. Italy. And this is the Ray-Ban 4202 Andy. Color 6153. The 55 eye size. 17 bridge. 145 temple length. And look at those beautiful blue mirrored lenses. Now, what's interesting, this is almost two different shades of blue. I don't know if you can see it. Slightly darker, maybe a little bit of a shinier finish. And then this has a matte finish on the side. The inside has the same shinier finish. I guess that's what it is. So it's shinier on the inside than it is on the outside. And I'm going to cut lenses. Let's take a look at this. If all goes well, everything's going to look the same. That's going to be too nice. You, you're going to be too cool, Jorge. You can't do nothing with you. So I'm going to take the... I'm going to go and leave that one out. I'm going to pop out the original demo lenses that you will receive. And I'm going to put your frame into the tracing element of my blocker. Program the shape into the computer so that years from now, should you ever need new lenses for this frame, I can mail them right to your home. Now this is the second pair of glasses that Jorge has gotten from me. He got a pair from me one or maybe actually two years ago, so he's coming back for more. I do appreciate your return business. I'm gonna hit this, you are Secret Agent 3058, 3058. I'm gonna hit the start button. Little stylus is gonna pop up, go around, trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at ChristianEyewear.com, your home to free prescription lenses. You purchase any frame from me and you'll get one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or unused health savings account flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase. Now, you'll get the full reimbursement from the health savings account flex card. Now, my website does not take flex cards, so if you call me up on the phone, I can take the payment that way. If you have vision insurance, I do not accept any vision insurance plans, but I can provide to you, upon request, an itemized receipt that you can submit for your out-of-network reimbursement in your insurance company. Can you believe this? We'll actually send money to your house in the form of a check. When's the last time they paid you money? So... That is the shape that I'll be cutting. I need to enter your pupillary distance, which is 32.5 for each eye. I'm going to move on to the next screen. The computer starts at 32.5, so I don't have to do anything except raise the optical center height to 24. I'm going to go two above the center and cut this at 24 millimeters high. I'm going to take your right lens, which the prescription reads minus two and a quarter minus 175 at 176. Minus two and a quarter minus 175 at 176 for the right lens. Put that on 176. I know it's on here somewhere. I shot past it. Okay, there we go. I knew we'd come around again on a circle. 176. Put the power drum on minus two and a quarter. Put the lens in. Spin it until the spherical component of your prescription comes into view first. Check your astigmatism correction. I'll explain what all that means later. I'm going to put three dots on your lenses. And that's probably too light for you to see. Where'd my pen go? There it is. There it is. There it's hiding. I'm going to put three dots here. Uno, dos, oche. I'm math wrong. All right, I'm going to put an aura on here for right. Place that on the platform. Now, the thing about I love about Zeiss, they document everything, including your name on the packet. That's why I had to cover up that so that nobody sees your name to respect your privacy. These are Carl Zeiss 
single vision lenses, which just means they're not bifocal. For the right eye, the prescription is minus two and a quarter, minus 175 at 176. And let's do the same thing now for the left lens, which the power is minus 250, minus 75 at 180, minus 250, minus 75 at 180. Turn that to 180 degrees, which will be played by zero for the in this video. Put the power drum on minus 250. Take the lens out of the protective packet. Spin the lens until the spherical component comes into view first. Get everything centered. Check your astigmatism correction. Minus three and a quarter. We're doing good there. Everything is perfect. Always like to double check everything. Put three dots on your lenses. Those actually turned out pretty well. Uno dos a hundred. Man, I'll tell you math, I'm horrible at math. I flunked math so many times I can't even count. <laughs> Hello, is this on? All right, all right, I'm gonna laugh at that joke if no one else does. Sadly, you know, there's a whole bunch of truth to that joke, but I'm still gonna laugh at it. All right, so, Carl's Ice Lenses, single vision, the left prescription, minus 250, minus 75 at 180. And the reason I highlight all of this is so that you, when you get, you will be receiving all the manufacturer's original packaging, so you know you're getting the real deal. Now, if you guys missed any of that, let me recap. So, are you guys picking up what I'm putting down? Just checking. All right. So this is a block. Points for difficulty here. Uh. So I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. That's not your lens. I saw the color. This is your lens. I need two double-sided adhesive stickers, of which I've got them here. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick this one onto the first block. Do the same thing now for the second one. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. That silver button on the back is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice. The first time it's going to attach itself to another magnet here in the arm. And the reason why I put those three dots on there, it tells me that it's oriented in there just perfectly. And did you see that polarization effect take effect with the screen? Look at that. And I'll show you how you can tell if a lens is polarized. In fact, let's do that now. You hear the term polar. Uh, the reason why I'm turning this around because you can't, well, I guess you can't see through the mirror, but you hear the term polar opposites. When you hold two lenses over each other, you can see through them. When you turn one 90 degrees away, it will block all the light from coming through, hence the term polar opposites. They block all horizontal glare. Two horizontals. When you turn one horizontal this way, that's why it blocks all the light. Now, get everything lined up in there just perfect. That blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. Your eye is just above that in inset. So I'm going to get those three dots into the, essentially the orange crosshair to make sure everything is perfect. Do that there. Hit that button, the arm's going to come down, place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the lens that ain't right, which I can identify with. I ain't right either. Pull the magnet, I mean the sticker away, line up the magnet, put the left lens onto the platform. Same optic, pupillary distance that, I, that has mirrored from the right side. Same optical center height. If it was different pupillary distance, I would have to enter that rarely, rarely, rarely do I ever change the optical center height. Someone would have almost had to have had a stroke and one side of their face start to shift. Or if they are anti-gravity, it went up. <laughs> but I've yet to see that happen. So I know you're raising an eyebrow now. That's the only way it's going to go up. So the rock. All right, so the rock's face goes upward. So hit that button. The arm's going to come down, place the... The block onto the left lens. You know what they call the rock in Colorado? Boulder. All right. Hello, is this on? Is anyone listening? Is it? <laughs> Don't worry, I won't quit my day job. So this is the blocker, this is the tracer, this is what's known as the edger. It's going to edge your lenses down from this size to this size. Actually, let's grab the right lens. And it's gonna do that on this cutting wheel. It's going to be a diamond crusted wheel that's going to grind away your lens material until it's the final sizes wheel in the center. It's going to put the V-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. Now I'm going to wake up the computer. Wakey, wakey, computer. 
job ID number 3058. 3058, or as I like to say, installment 3058 of my 330, 330 million volume series of making a pair of glasses for everyone in America. Now, these are polycarbonate lenses. If they were not, if they were plastic, high index plastic or Trivex, I would select that material, but we're going to stick with polycarbonate. It's my lens material of choice for many reasons. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lenses because I would never do that for sunglass lenses. Rarely, if ever, do I do it for clear lenses. I don't want any glare. When you polish the edge of lenses, glare comes in. Now, there are certain drill mount frames that you can twist my arm and get me to do it. But other than that, nobody gets polished lenses because you're paying to have stop the glare from coming in. Why would you let it on the front and the back of the lens? Why would you let it in through the side? So I am going to put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. So now the magnet's going to do its job a second time. I'm pressing the sticker on there firmly. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. I don't know what happens when I'm going to make a pair of glasses for someone named Chuck. I'm going to have to come up with another name. So I'm going to hit the green start button. The dirty door closes. The clamp shuts. You think the door is dirty now? Wait a couple weeks. Secret Agent 2840. I'm going to let this thing get dirty so you can't see through it. But it's tracing the shape of the right lens now, making sure it's large enough to go into the frame. And the old Jewish carpenter saying, love thy neighbor as thyself, as well as measure twice, cut once. It's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. Now the lens is dropping down onto the cutting wheel, which you can't see because of the dirty door. All right. Secret Agent 2840, you win. I'll clean the door. But the light you see flickering in the background is water. That's there to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off the cutting wheel. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry, meaning that no water sprays onto the lens while it is cutting. Unlike plastic, high index plastic and Trivex that do cut wet, meaning that water sprays onto those lenses for the duration of the cutting cycle. Now, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate, which is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. These are high-impact ballistics-grade lens material. The same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel from flying debris. It also has 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin there in Gaston, South Carolina. This is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that you have to reapply. Now, you can see the schwarf on the outside of the lens. A sunglass lens, a dark lens, absorb the sun's rays from entering into your eyes. A mirrored lens reflects it back, making it 30% darker than just a tiered, uh, tinted lens. Now, you can get the mirror on a tinted lens or a polarized lens. Polarized, again, are like horizontal Venetian blinds for your lenses. The same way you can skip a stone off of water. Lights does the same thing. It hits a flat surface and reflects back up. So, polarized lenses stop reflections off of around originally on water which is what they were designed for but off of roads bumpers windshields things like that now these mirror colors you can get in several choices there is two forms of silver two forms of gold two forms of blue there is a matte silver which they call white and a shiny silver a high luster there is a matte gold which they call amber and a shiny gold There is a matte blue, which ironically they call blue, and the strong blue. That's what these are. This is the strong blue lens. Now there is a green. There's only one form of green, and there's only one form of red. Now I can do the video for all of these colors, but for some reason I can't block red. You saw me over here doing this color. You can see through these to where that orange crosshair is pay attention when I put the red here it goes pitch black and I can't see what I'm working on in the, the, the three dots on the lenses so I can do videos for any of these colors but not red so if you want red I'll do it for you but I'll make these for you I should say but I cannot cut them here I have to send them off to Zeiss 
Zeiss will cut them. They have a different blocker. They're not using Essilor tools at Zeiss, ironically, because they are arch enemies. That's like uh, Coke using Pepsi products. It ain't going to happen. That's like Apple using uh, Samsung things. It ain't going to happen. So, now, still a little bit of optical sawdust on the edge of the lens. I'm going to scrape all of that off. Once it is all the way off the lens, I collect it neatly into one pile on the counter and then I wipe it on the floor. So let's see, the, I put a safety bevel on the back surface of the lens. It's not like the front of the lens is sharp by any means, but I want to smooth this out as much as possible, especially I do the entire lens because I only want this to be smooth because I'm going to see if this fits first time around. I'm going to tuck it in on the, on the side I have closest to me. And when I push down the nose, I don't think it's going to go. Nope. So I'm going to take this down based on the size two tenths of a millimeter. I may need to do more. Actually, you know what? I'm going to have to go old school because the sticker came off. So I flip this over to L. It's still two tenths of a millimeter smaller. Place the magnet into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby, or as I call it, the Jorge. Hit the green start button. Just like before, the door closes, the clamp shuts, the lens is going to be traced by the two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the left side of the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape. And then measuring the thickness of the lens to know where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, of which I can't show you yet because I'm going to go old school. Let me flip this over so there's no uh, confidentiality stuff there. I am going to take this down on the handstone because the sticker came off just like the cutting wheel. I'm going to go old school and take this off by hand until it fits. Now, because of the amount of sawdust that kicks up, you may want to turn the volume down on your, on your computer or your phone because I'm going to turn on the, the sh vacuum so it doesn't fly all over the place. Make sure all the sawdust is off. We're still soft on my hands. See if this fits or if I have to take it down some more. Yep, take it down a little bit more. Okay, turn your volume down. And clean off the edge of the lens here. We're going to see if this fits again. Tuck it in at the outside corner, press down the thumbs. Now it snaps in there evenly. So let's go ahead and inspect the right lens. Turn that back to 176. Put it in over the dot, read the power. I'm getting minus two and a quarter. One tick mark past two going towards three. Minus two and a quarter. Now you have seven steps of uncorrected astigmatism. Un Uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights look alike of the letters P and F. So I'm going to read the second curvature on the lens. I'm getting minus four. So that is done there. That's because if you remember the high school math, you add two like signs together. If you add two and a quarter to minus 175, you can end up at minus four. That's where we're at. Now your left eye is two and a half diopters of far sided correction and only 75. 0.75 three quarters of a doctor so we're going to end up at minus three and a quarter for the left eye 
which is finishing now. Let's go ahead and take the left lens out. Make sure all the optical sawdust is off the edge of the lens. See if this fits or if I need to take it down some more, tuck it in at the outside corner, push down with my thumbs, it snaps right in. We can go ahead and take this block off, pull the sticker away, dry that off, add to my sticker collection, come down here to the lensometer. Actually, my pupillary dots are gone, so let me put that back on there so I can measure everything perfectly as it should appear. Okay, there's a dot. Now we're going to turn that fine tune knob to 180. Read the power. And I'm getting minus 250, exactly halfway between 2 and 3. Check the second curve, your astigmatism correction, and we end up at minus 3 and a quarter. One tick mark past 3. All right, flashlight, don't bail on me now. Put a dot on there. Now your pupillary distance is 32.5 for each eye, which is a total of 65. Optical center height of 24. I'm going to turn the card around. Place the PD. So well, actually, don't need that now. You guys can't see, but I'm going to measure. We're getting 65 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. Optical center height of 24. Not to the bottom of the lens, but to the thickest part of the plastic. And we're getting 24. 24 so that is cut perfectly now this is the portion in every video that as I clean your lens as I mentioned Jorge when you get these in the mail in Gaston South Carolina there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight however there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other that's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other and I'm part of that 80% but because of that statistic 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get them in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. One, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. Set down on the counter, and press down. There is no wobble. Now, when I say wobble, I take mine off and press down. They wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. Put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing. Flip this over, press down to make sure there is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do. So... How's that look? How does that look? Almost as good as the Ray-Ban. The only thing that is missing is the Ray-Ban logo on the lens. I cannot do that. That would be a trademark violation or counterfeit, whatever you want to call it. So not prescription lenses will not have that logo on there. So, but that's still going to look pretty cool in my opinion. Now, this is the point in every video that, as I mentioned, that Jesus loves you unconditionally. Me, I'm just trying to get a like. If you enjoyed this video, do just that like the video give me a thumbs up uh, down below if you want to see more videos subscribe to my youtube channel click the bell icon so you can get notified of different frame and lens combinations as they become available if you have any questions go to the contact me page of the website or you can type in info at christian eyewear.com if you just like to type you can follow me on facebook instagram and twitter as christian eyewear but Jorge, thanks for your repeat business. Thank you for the purchase of the Ray-Ban 4202 Andy. Now this comes, I, I know this comes in multiple colors. I don't believe this comes in different sizes. But this is the 55 eye size, color 6153, the matte blue with the polarized gray lenses. So when you look out, you see gray. When people look at you, they're going to see the mirror color. So... Again, thanks for your purchase. Thanks for watching. And now there'll be a, a link in the description below if anyone wants to purchase these frames. But again, thanks for watching. And now hopefully you've seen how I bring God's loving feeling back to glasses. Thank you.